Hello everyone, this is Marita, one who catches lightning with the Path of Ish podcast, Walking with Our Shadow, where we share ancient indigenous teachings of remembrance, all so we can walk and learn how to walk a path of radical self-love. Hello everyone, welcome back to another opportunity to sit with everything that we have been this week as we gather ourselves into the circle. Let us take time to welcome our three breaths. And bring them in, breathing in and out through the nose. Arriving and welcoming our mind into this time and place. In and out through the nose, arriving and welcoming our body into this time and place. In and out through the nose, arriving and welcoming our essence into this time and place. As we gather ourselves with our breath, with our words, let us call upon the four directions as we mark and recognize this sacred circle. And so we call and welcome and ask the East to hold us as we remember that we can begin again, that every day as the sun rises and even throughout the day, any time that we connect back to the East, no matter what has happened in our day, no matter what mistakes we have made, we can begin again. We can start anew and we don't need to wait for another day. Thank you, East. As we welcome the South and ask the South to hold us, hold our heat, our fire, our bones. This is the place of our bones and the creation of us at the bone level. And allow that to come in. As we approach the West and the guardians of the West and the breath of life, as we breathe, so we are breathed by everything on this earth and these creations, these kingdoms around us. And can we start intentionally connecting to this cycle of breath. Not just our own, not just between humans, between us and the greater world. As we breathe, so we are breathed by all of the plant kingdom. And that cycle then returning back breath to us, connecting us to all. Then we go up and turn to the north and the guardians of the north as we connect to the land. This earth, this planet, this galaxy, this home. And this is where we connect to the ancestors, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we go back down into the east and ask to enter the circle. And as we enter into the circle, The topic and conversation that has been provided for us today is an extension of a conversation that I had a few hours ago in a class that I just taught. 
This class is taking place at this beautiful time in the Mayan calendar where we started. It is a journey with cacao through the elements, through death and rebirth. And we started in the Tresena of Quetzalcoatl. How beautiful is that? 13 days to sit with Quetzalcoatl. Creator and tell that story of a creator being. And as you sit with that story of creation, you can st sit with all the stories of creation and all the stories of creator beings. And hopefully you can start to reflect in your own life on what you have created. What are you creating with your hands? What are you bringing forth? Whether you're cooking or cleaning, tending, sewing or weaving. You are a creator in your own right. Whether you think of yourself as creative or not. And since we know that our lives are the lessons, when we look at the stories of all the many creator beings, all the deities that humans have created stories in the creation of the world and the cosmos, and the first creation, the second creation, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, which many say we are on. We can sit with those stories that have been woven at the bone level of who we are. For bones carry marrow and mary marrow carries DNA and DNA connects us to our ancestors. This tree of life, the structure inside the skeletal system of our bones. And as we sit here, as the Tresena turns to Tijak, to Etsnab, the obsidian knife, as we sit right now, as the veil is thin with the ancestors, as Dia de los Muertos approaches, as we've lit the first candle and now put the water upon the altar, we are now making bread right now. As we prepare to remember. Now, whether you celebrate Dia de los Muertos, whether you know the story or even the Disney story of Coco or not, there are celebrations in every culture of remembering. But one of the things that has been lost or sometimes does not get spoken to or about is that when we are remembering those who have passed on, We are also ourselves remembering. The Mayans say we are born amnesiacs, and so it is our job or our task in this lifetime to remember our connection and our creation. And that, as we remember back through the layers, as we grow, we get closer to our bones. While creation and many stories, you are made from the bones, from the fire up. Our path of remembrance is kind of backwards. We start with the flesh. We start with that. And as we grow older, as we get closer to our bones again, as our bodies start to get smaller, as our bones start to lose structure, we pay more attention to our bones. 
So the path forward in life is the path backwards in remembering. And by remembering the bones and the ancestors, we can start to connect to that journey of our creation. This allows us in this bridge between dimensions, time, and space, for that to be a bridge that expands and contracts with breath and with memory. As we reflect, we are reflected as we breathe, so we are breathed, and that's how we began this conversation. Yet breath, when we are created, is one of the last things that we have. And breath is life. A being is born and then breathes, and then is activated, and then becomes alive. Breath is life. Oxygen, the ability to breathe, means you, at that point, are alive. It's that transition, that spark, after all this time of being created, of your bones being knit, your fires being knit, your heart being created, the power of your memory being put into all that you are, as the stories are sung, as the Nahuales are chanted over and over in your name, as you are created in them, with them, through them, this pot being stirred, these layers of creation that then include the mountains and the winds and the trees and the oceans. is all of these elements of our body are put together in this time, this dimension, this space, then we birth and we breathe. And for many times, that separation, that birth into this time, this dimension, this reality can be a disconnect. And sometimes our forgetting starts at birth. We are born amnesiacs. And so what we have to do is remember everything that happened in that womb. How we were created. And if you don't live in a culture or family or society that moves and walks with the aina, with the land that is closely connected in a reciprocal relationship to all beings, to all creatures, one as part of the whole, then that disconnection, that cut of the umbilical cord is more jarring. For you have been birthed not just as an amnesiac, but in a culture that has forgotten how it was created. That is why in an indigenous culture, the family is so important because the older people, those closest to the bones, can tell the story of bones. And so as you grow up and hear the stories of your parents and your grandparents, as they have gone through that process of remembering walking backwards in their minds as they walk forward in life. They can sing to your bones. They can tell you of that journey and that story of how. You were created with fire and wind and water and earth. 
But if you are born into a society that has cut itself away from a natural rhythm of life and imposed, imposed a calendar that is square, imposed days of the week and hours, which include work hours, and have they've literally created a whole different world, a whole different program. How do you create a program? You create the reality of that program, and part of that program is time and your measure of it and your value of it and what you're supposed to do with it. And you unravel and untangle and break the circle of time and you make it into a line and then you can control. But if you take time on your journey of life, if you find those circles that can hold you and nurture you to the bone, You can go through a death and rebirth process consciously. And the reason that I keep talking about bones is that I've found that in a lot of the spiritual circles, things become very distant, outside of the body. Ideas of ascension are to leave your body, to ascend beyond. And we forget that the journey is the journey to our bones again. The fire, the marrow, the structure, the building blocks of life are contained in our bones and the stories of who we are and our lineages It's all in the bones. Yet we live in spiritual places that are disconnected and have no structure. We have teachers and healers out there that do not have that connection to the bone. And so what is created is this distorted idea and connection and fragmentation of the possibility and the intelligence of the human vessel to be the lesson, the medicine, for it to hold all of this. The human body has so much intelligence that it does so many things that we don't even have to think about. We breathe without thinking about it. When we break something, our bones mend. There is so much intelligence in the body Yet we have divided and cataloged this knowledge in a way that there is no relationship nor, como se dice, autoridad, authority. Because we give that authority to the experts. And we don't take authority of of our lives or what we are creating. This is not a conversation of a denial of Western medicine. No, no, no. Western medicine is one language, one way, one path of healing. Eastern medicine is another language and path of healing. And you can hold both together as long as you are responsible and you build relationship. 
we have an opportunity in this Tresena of Tishak to of the obsidian knife, obsidian mirror, to look at ourselves and look at what we are creating. And can you look beyond the surface level? Can you get to that bone level and find love there? Find joy and peace. And these things which we call emotions, but usually exist when I talk to people, they feel like their emotions exist beyond their body, outside of their body, or take them outside of their body. But I'm asking, maybe, are you ready to be with your bones? There's this song that I love that Sammy Copley, I believe, Scottish uh, singer-songwriter, I love you to the bones. Love the song. And it's this song of, yes, truly, I love you to the bones. I love every piece of you, every part of you. And can you sing that song to yourself? Can we love at the bone level, can we walk a path of radical self-love and acceptance of our creative nature and force and power and take responsibility for our inaction and our actions at the bone level, at the structure. There's so much lack of structure in this modern world. So many nebulous ideas and conversations. So many arguments to take you out of your body. But this conversation is an invitation to sit with your skeletal system. to sit with your structure that informs you that you can create structure in your life. And so as we honor our bones and the stories they carry, the stories of our ancestors and our own let us sit with the meditation. So just take a moment to take three breaths in and out. And as we do this, let's go to the bone level. In and out through the nose and let us welcome our skull, that which houses our brain, our central nervous system. Can we bring in our skull into this time and place? In and out through the nose, welcoming the body, the skeletal system into this time and place. In and out through the nose, welcoming, yes, our essence, our soul that needs a vessel to reside in into this time and place. And let us go all to the north. And as you face the north, you have... Your, the south at your back. And let us welcome in our ancestors now. And as they come in, let us walk around to the south and sit there facing the north. As we sit in the south, the place of where our bones are created, we get to remember as the ancestors come in. So let's call in the ancestors who come in a good way. Or as Perdita Finn says, let us call upon the dead and see what stories they have for us today. And we are going to ask them, what is the lesson 
of our bones. And just take some moments here in the silence to sit with your bones. For those of you who need a little bit more prompting, just keep breathing till your body gets heavy. So you just feel your muscles and your tendons hanging off your bones. And connect with your skull, your cervical spine, your clavicle, your sternum, your ribs, your arm bone, your funny bone, your metatarsals. Connect to the hips and the hip joints and the femur. All the way down, going all the way down into the ground again. Your bones came from the ground and rose up from the ground. And to the ground they will return. Feel into that shin bone, that ankle bone, your feet bones, your foot bones, your toe bones, all the, all the little bones in your body. And ask your bones, what are your stories? What can they help you remember now?
as we slowly start coming back, thanking the silence Thanking our bones and their cracking and their hissing, just like fire. For those of you who need longer time, please take a longer time. And I highly recommend doing this meditation, listening to a fire, the hissing and the cracking of it will connect you to that fire and that creation of your bones. And so we thank fire, the element of fire. We thank the south and the north. We release the ancestors back across. Or we release them back to their altars that they're waiting for, that pan de muerto. And we thank them for being here for reminding us of our structure. And with that, we thank all the directions, the east, the south, the west, and the north. For all of the elements that we have been created in, to our relationship to our land inside and outside, We thank the Nahuales as they move 13 days at a time, 20 Nahuales in this circular motion, reminding us of creation. So with gratitude and thanks, we thank all that we have been and are. We thank this opportunity of connecting and feeling love to the bone. Shade. Once again, it is with deepest gratitude that I bow to you for joining me on this podcast, this episode, this circle, this platica, this meditation, this remembering. I hope that you have stayed curious. I hope to see you in the circle again next week. So make sure that you like or follow. Until then, May you be blessed with abundance of peace and radical self-love.